this morning with uh, Paul Kale, again, good friend, good coach of mine, um, CEO of Kinetic Fighting uh, as well, ex-Special Forces soldier. It's just, the list is too long, it's hard to do introductions for you. <laughs> so I tend to, people should know by now that train with me, uh, everything that you do. Um, it doesn't take much to Google the world's toughest man. Um, sorry, Australia's toughest man. We'll get you there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get you there. We'll get We're you there. We're working on it. But I love it when Probably you come yeah. visit, not just for the training that we um, do together, but the time we spend together talking about martial arts too, which was fun. So we were just kind of shooting the breeze then and talking about um, stylistically everything kind of like starting to blend into one and everybody's just starting to call grappling jujitsu now. You yeah. know, like every form of grappling when, you know, someone like yourself that's cross-trained in so many different things, it's actually lots of different things. Yeah, so, yeah, I think what's happening with jiu-jitsu is basically when people refer to jiu-jitsu, they're mostly referring to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, but it has moved away, a long way from what the intent and the original use of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which, you know, was a valet tudo to be able to fight in a anything-goes environment. But then again, it still, it still has its limitations. I mean, its fighting is about predominantly unarmed fighting and dealing with a um, more of a no-holds-barred MMA-style environment. So, you know, but the thing is, that's that's the essence of the, of the art. And now... I think when you look at it, positional hierarchy, all these different things aren't so important to people. It's just they chase the submission in whatever way they legally can within the rule set. And however that looks, it tends to be called jiu-jitsu. And it's, it's, if you're into jiu-jitsu, it's not a big problem. But then again, when people refer to self-defense as Krav Maga, it's the same thing. Yep. You, you know, if you're saying self-defense training, then say self-defense training because it's Krav Maga is not a a word that means self-defense training. It's a particular style. And again, I think what's happened with Krav is a similar thing. I've never had a I don't train Krav or have anything to do with it. But watching it from the outside, they're going through a similar thing with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the there's a lot of instructors and groups that have broken away from the original group and are going down their own um, path, have their own affiliations, have their own style of doing things, have moved away from what's been done in Israel. And it's it's just become a blanket term now. Yeah, which is interesting. And anybody that is really seriously interested in self-defense, it's like having that grappling knowledge from something like jiu-jitsu or judo Whenever um, I've done self-defense seminars with you, and we've had people from everywhere, it's always interesting to see the grappling people because they they can problem solve their way out of any touch, mm. you know. As opposed to like if you've just done boxing, once someone's holding on to you, it's it's difficult. Yeah. So it definitely gives people a leg up, and it definitely I don't want to sound like boxing isn't great, but boxing with something like judo or jiu-jitsu is really like in the history of things of people designing things like Krav Maga has been a blend of some guy that did two sports really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and even the uh, Australian Army, um, Victoria Police, way back in the in the day, in the 60s and so forth, when like, people like John Gay were down there uh, running training, they were doing the, the Aikido locks from Tamiki style. The training was predominantly boxing and wrestling. It's really interesting when you look at old training and how um, in the 80s we sort of moved away from it. But that old stuff was really Western wrestling and boxing blended together. And judo, people learning judo. I mean, judo was one of the first martial arts to hit the Western world. With, yeah. um, and old judo with the leg grabs, it may as well have been grabs, wrestling in a uniform. Yeah, it was less wrestling in a uniform. Yeah. And they went through the similar thing as uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu because that's... I mean, the Brazilians learnt from the Japanese and, you know, back then when it was being introduced around the world, it was a, it was a two terms that were being used because it was Kano Jiu-Jitsu and Kano was using the term Judo, wanted to bring Judo in. 
same same group. So some people would stick with the name Jiu Jitsu. The Brazilians, the interesting thing about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is that it's a moment in time. It's like a moment that the Kota Khan was transitioning through, and and the Brazilians hung on to them. So they, you know, and so as judo around the world spread into the Olympic Games, became an Olympic sport, yep. changed the way people saw it and played it. The Brazilians, through the Gracie family, were hanging on to this, and and, and some others, of course, were hanging on to this moment in time. And you see that literally. I mean, look at Aikido. You can basically see when their their chief instructor of a particular group started training Aikido. So you got Morai Weshibo who founded Aikido and had a blend of other martial arts. He had some other um, martial arts that he brought to Daitaru Aiki Jiu Jitsu. And based on when you started training with him and then left, that was your moment in time. So you got a bunch of people that kicked off in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and then 1950s. So after World War uh, II, massive changes in the way Aikido was done. Correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, often I'm just regurgitating things that I've been told by uh, you or uh, sometimes sometimes Dan and Geordie, but even Masoyama himself had an Aikido black belt, am I correct? Aiki, Aiki Jiu-Jitsu. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he had a menkyo, he had a, a license in Aiki uh, Jiu-Jitsu, and if you look at what Kyokushin calls Goshin Jitsu, which is our self-defense syllabus, yep. um, it is basically, it looks like Aikido. They're yeah. teaching kodagesh and wrist locks and, you know, there's pictures of uh, Sosai, Oyama, you know, escaping. Yeah, I'd love to come to Japan and do some Goshen with you. That'd be fun. Yeah. So if we were to leave, say, people with some advice today in regards to grappling and self-defense, yeah. um, first yeah. of all, of like setting their training program, but how long should they train to expect to be proficient as well because this is always an interesting one and I'm kind of like setting a trap for you here as, as well what do you what do you think what would be your advice well the way I, I look at it is what's your time frame so and and the reason for that is the amount of work I do with the government with the defense or the police what's your time frame how much time do you have to get a skill set across to people and then what's the core that you want to leave people with at the beginning so that if they wish to take that away with them and develop those skill sets in their own time or um, they've got a particularly keen um, commander who allows them to develop a skill set or whatever it is, they've got a core that's been left with them that they can then, you know, understand what they want to look for to help with that. Or have, you need good instructors that say, hey, this is, you know, this is why this is falling down for you. You probably want to get some skill set in there. And policing is an interesting thing, you know. Policing, you're predominantly trying to get people to the ground mm. so that you can take away the threat of their ability to, you know, use their legs with leverage or to run, yeah. to escape. Or and at to the moment, that's weapon. non-existent for our policing, which is a travesty in, it, well, in itself. Yeah, I think everything goes through governments, everything goes just through policy. It's as simple as that. It doesn't go through what's exactly need it. It goes through whatever policy is seen as being appropriate. Yep. And then it comes down to something happens, there's an inquest, okay, this skill needs to be shown. Yep. It's done in a very benign way. You've got a bunch of people that have no idea. And, How long and, would it uh, take you to get a, a soldier proficient by himself that you think that at least he could okay, so what survive for a little bit longer? What we've done with the army is, you know, I, I mean, initially we had a five-day package for special forces. So you've got five days to work with. Now, that way this is rolled out across the army, the first level that all recruits and officer cadets do is one day. So you've got to get something in place that allows them to plug in and be, at least understand what's going on around them, regardless of what job they're doing in the army. And the perfect scenario for how long or how much you would like them to train? Well, I think the best thing to do is to have a culture, which is happening in the army. There's a, there's a big shift in culture. Um, but 
to have a culture within the army that allows people to train martial arts. And that's what the ICCs are about. It's like on base, you've got a place where you can do judo, jiu-jitsu, different martial arts, but also to have a combat center that's driving, directing, it's developing subject matter experts yep. through combative master trainers and growing capability within a brigade setting so that there's a, a place that people can go to and yeah you gotta do it you set. gotta do it all the time I know yeah. when someone comes to see me for self defense they're just like they're feeling a little bit worried I tell them well first of all there's nothing that I'm gonna show you now that's gonna help you but if you take it upon yourself to train twice a week for the rest of your life I'll give you the confidence that you're searching for yeah. but that's as soon as you stop training you'll lose that confidence yeah and the other thing too is that you've got to remember it's not a one-on-one -on -one engagement mostly it's a it's an event with at least two people involved and it should be and even if you're caught out on your own there should be someone nearby for you so that big thing for us is the biggest difference between the way the Australian Army does our we do our training is that if you can't fight how do I help someone who can yep. achieve regaining the initiative so it's like all right it's like being in a rugby pack and you're on the bottom yes and, and that might be what? a fun thing to do for civilians a two-on-one package as and, well and, for and if, and if I'm on the bottom helping each other and there's someone there and they're about to step off and and tackle someone out and they get out of that pack yeah now it might be illegal but um you know it's something that i remember watching the all blacks do back in the day we used to do it in, in you know army rugby or whatever I might grab their leg. So you're not going anywhere, mate. Yeah. You're staying here. I'm on the ground stuck under people, but you're staying with me. That's what we get across to soldiers. If, yeah. if I don't know how to fight, I'm underneath. Well, guess what? You're staying with me. Yeah. I need to stop myself from getting badly hurt. And I know someone's going to come in and support me. And I've, I've done it. a little bit of stuff That's with it. you with that before with Kinetic. I remember with the with Anton we did some two on one mm. versus a, mm. someone with a knife some restraint and holding techniques and then Very. you know they work they work real well especially when you got Anton on, on one side as well it's nice to have a UFC fighter on the on one side of you exactly. too when you're tackling someone <laughs> yeah and that's your ultimate goal and we, we had some guys at um, at um, two commando like we literally had uh, even out of all the teams that could have got hit in Afghanistan for a hand-to-hand -hand encounter. We had uh, one, two, three, you know, half the team were very handy jiu-jitsu guys. Yeah, nice. And then the other guy was a Victoria Cross winner. So it was like, a, it was a, a, a fairly, I mean, if you're gonna pick a team that had to, that got caught up in a hand-to-hand -hand fight, yeah. you would have said, well, I hope it's that team. And it was. Well, I know how tough you guys do selection and all those things. So I think any of those teams would be, would be super, super tough. Oh, they're super tough. And that's the thing too. Guys are just like, well, you know what? I, I love the attitude of, I mean, I heard a story from a friend from 22 SAS who served way back and talked about the Falklands when they lost a bunch of guys with a helo that uh, hit the water and just how they were talking about one guy who went down with the hilo, but couldn't get himself out, but cut the guy above him away, yeah. the seat by the way, yeah, so right. he could get out. So it's that mindset of mission first, and, and if I can't be a part of that, how do I make sure I'm doing whatever I can to the final end yeah. that my team can do that? And that is the, it's that self-sacrifice. That's self great human spirit right there, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the bit that is, that's what you're looking for in selection. You're looking for someone who will push to the point of failure, as in their, their, their bodies let them down, but they keep going until they can't do anything more yeah. to empower the end state of the mission in whatever way. Or you've got a team and you, you know, that's why you have commander's intent. You know what, we're, we've been isolated. We can't fulfill our mission what's the overall mission and yep. what can I do now to create a new mission that, that aids commander's intent. Yep. And, and people need go, to think a little bit more along those lines for spot, fight sports too. Yeah. I really think like if you can't train, get to the gym and help other people train. Exactly. Like stop being so selfish and get in there and help your team because it's, it's the community that makes you strong. I, I can't stress enough. And it's funny because 
uh, Dan Hooker was, has been saying something similar about the city kickboxing thing. It's like, as one, as the tide rises, all the ships rise. You know, and people have to start thinking about that at their club. It's like, even if you're a white belt and you've only just started, go and watch and help people out as best you can. Be part of the team. Make people feel good. If all you can do is take a good attitude to that room, you'll be helping everybody yeah. out. And, and that's a cultural thing. And that's a very important thing. It's, it's a... The leaders of that culture, it's, that's where it takes a, a real skill of leadership to generate that and create that, that sort of... It's easy to get caught up in... what's in front of you rather than understanding the big picture mm. of what you want to achieve and really martial arts I mean the gold medal of the day that's just a it's a buzz for the moment and then you're chasing the next medal or you came second or whatever it's it's not that important compared to what martial arts can leave you with as in helping your personality in yes. helping 100%. the way you think in helping you get through the problems of life and the way you solve problems on the mat tends to be an example because under pressure, tired, you can see that, well, how, how are you going to solve problems of life, of business? Yeah. I mean, all everything we do in life has problems. It's never smooth sailing. And the thing is, when you sit there going, oh, I just want things to be easy, you're really just saying, you'll probably show that attitude and mindset on the mat. Yeah. And so you'll go, well, I want things to be easy, so I'll tend to go wrestle the white belts yeah. as a purple belt and wrestle and pick my targets and have, yeah. uh, you know, rather than, you know, just roll with anyone. Or yeah. you might go, well, I'm sorry. Paul, put me in side control. That's yeah. always fun. And on, the <laughs> other, and on the other side of that, you might be someone go, well, I don't want to spend any time with easy. I'm just going to spend all my time hitting these hard guys. You're also not doing the right thing. Yeah. Because you've got to be, if those hard guys that you keep hitting looked at you and said, you're not worth me wrestling, you wouldn't get better. Yeah. So you've got to have this balance where you just wrestle. Like, yeah, you want to wrestle? No yeah. worries. Well, I'm helping you in this situation and yep. well, you're helping me because you're... You That's know, well said. And I've been in that trap heaps of times. Mm. Heaps of times I've felt that trap. Like, ah, I need to wrestle the hardest guys all the time. Whereas like, you need to, you need both. You yeah. need everything. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. And, it, and, and that creates a culture. Mm. And as soon as these expectations are being met by people, individuals, then that means you have a group that's behaving a certain way. And once a group behaves in a certain way consistently, that's then called culture. Yeah. And once you have a culture, you don't have to do too much. You just keep bumping it. And that, that's on the one path. of the things too that um, you've been trying to instill in the in the Jis and Budo group as well. It's like everyone stay open minded. We got auction guys over here, Shotokan guys over here, judo guys, um, you know, jiu jitsu guys. guys, and just trying to all come together and uh, yeah. share martial arts as like a complete yeah. budo where it's like we're just trying to create that culture on a on a larger scale. So, when do we have that uh, camp? It's Easter, isn't it? Yeah, Easter. Easter every year. So, our first annual camp was uh, last year and the second one's at yep. the Australian Institute of Sport at the Combat Centre this year at Easter. Yeah. So if anyone's interested in learning uh, from a whole bunch of different people, Thai boxing guys, Kyokushin guys, Judo, Jiu Jitsu guys, uh, it's a fun martial arts uh, camp and it's a good way to network with other clubs around the country and share ideas on not only martial arts but how to run a good club and how to create that culture as well which is which is important exactly and you've got people that are invested in that group so we've had guys that have struggled with their jiu-jitsu instructor and it's hit and miss and stuff they get to the camp and they're meeting you know six guys that are black belts in jiu-jitsu and yeah. one of them go look i'll come down mate i'll help you out yeah. you know because the, the linkage may not be the jiu-jitsu they don't have a, a link in in their in their um in their in background with jiu-jitsu yeah. one's gracie one's machado whatever even though in saying that, all of the senior um, jiu-jitsu guys all come back to the family. Yeah. But yeah. everyone, you know, down has this odd thing, but that's all about a marketing thing, right? But in saying that, you've got guys that have a common interest 
with a culture that's about helping people get better at whatever it is they want to get better yeah. at at the time. And so I've seen guys now where there's black belts from that group going down helping. And Jis and Budo is all about real fighting too, like all round fighting. Yeah, Jis is like real training. fighting, real combat, real yeah. and uh, even fighting and combat are, are two different things. But it's about a real having an application. Yeah. That means it doesn't matter what you do. I'll do wrist locks on people, but I tried in jujitsu. So I get pressure tested application. Yep. I've got people trying to stop that or that it works or it doesn't, you know, it's about whatever it is you want to do is fine, but pressure test it. Magic. And if you pressure test it, you'll find, um, you're, you're finding out it's weaknesses and strengths. And that's what you need. If I do this technique, what's the weaknesses? What's the stress? Yeah. Magic.